Good morning, everyone. Jacqueline Morosco of Spirited Practice. And um, today we are going to start practice laying flat on your back. And if you need anything, um, you know, a little support under your knees or under your neck, go ahead and add that in. If you want to bend your knees, that would be okay. And what I want you to do is to just place a hand on your chest and then a hand someplace below your rib cage. So it could be on your diaphragm or if it feels better, like below your belly button. And taking a few moments to breathe in fully. So in, unless you're congested, breathe in nose, chest, and then belly, and breathe out belly, chest, nose. And take a few minutes to really connect with your breath and your body and the sensations that you feel as you're breathing. Notice the parts of the body that connect to the floor as you're breathing. Notice how your body moves. And not enhancing anything as you breathe, just noticing what is. And you might even have your eyes closed and just feeling your breath, feeling your body. If you're feeling any tension anywhere in your body, just allowing it to seep out into the floor. So you're very present and aware of what's happening. And once you feel like you have that rhythm, you can release your hands down to the ground. And if your legs are straight, we're going to bend them now so that your feet are flat on the ground and your knees are bent. And then very carefully, very slowly, because I really want you to feel the sensations just starting to tilt through the pelvis with your breath, inhale, tilting the pelvis up, exhale, tilting the pelvis down. And you can make this movement as big or as small as you'd like. And just tilting and breathing and noticing how your body feels and then feeling your hands on the ground, your arms on the ground, your feet, and then on the inhale, if it feels good, you're gonna lift up the pelvis. So inhale, pelvis up, exhale, pelvis down. And again, moving with your breath, no rush. We're looking for the flow of body with breath. Now, if you want to add in, we're going to lift up the pelvis, the chest, and the arms. On the inhale, exhale, arms come down, the pelvis comes down. And if this is too much on the low back, then I want you to just continue to tilt through the pelvis and you can add in the arm movements if you want. So remembering that you're only moving in a way that feels really, really good in your body. Now the next time that your hands come down, we're going to interlace the fingers and press the palms towards the ceiling. And this time I want you to feel your feet on the ground, feel your shoulders and your head on the ground. And the inhale, you're gonna lift up the pelvis or tilt it up and exhale, come down. So again, just through the pelvis and we don't wanna overdo it. So really paying attention to what feels good in your body. Inhale, lifting up. And notice how that feels in the upper back body. Now the next time, I want you to press your hands up, pull your shoulders down, and then press down with your feet as you lift up. And we're gonna hold the position, but you're gonna keep breathing. And notice what's going on in the upper back body, in the head and the neck, and the feet, in your quads, and your butt. And then on one of your exhales, we're gonna come down, release the arms, and then we're gonna take the knees into the chest one at a time. And gently rocking from side to side, noticing how your low back feels on the floor as you're moving. 
And then stopping at some point, we're gonna roll through the feet. So a couple of times in each direction. And if you like it better, you can do one foot at a time. I like to sometimes do them at the same time. Then we're going to take the left foot to the floor and interlace the fingers on the back of the right thigh. Inhale, you're gonna press the heel up, straighten the leg, the thigh presses into the hands and the hands pull on the thigh, and the exhale, you bring that knee in towards your chest. Inhale, press the foot and straighten the leg, reaching up towards the sky with that leg. Exhale, knee into the chest. We're gonna do this a couple more times with your breath, no rush. Just noticing how your body feels. This will be the last time. And when, after your knee comes in on the exhale, releasing your hands, gently taking that foot to the floor and bringing your second leg up. Again, interlacing on the back of the thigh. Inhale, straighten the leg, press the foot up towards the ceiling. Exhale, knee into the chest. And as you're doing this, you know, noticing where you feel sensation, And again, two more times. And after your next exhale, releasing your hands, gently taking that foot to the ground. Your feet are about hip width apart, and we're going to stretch the arms out to the sides. Now, I'm going to turn this way so that you can see my knees. So you have your feet and knees, you know, about hip distance apart. Your arms are out to the sides. You're going to inhale center and exhale. You're only going to move two to three inches to the side. Inhale back to the center and then move to the other side. So it's a teeny tiny movement, right? Maybe not teeny tiny, but fairly small. Now next time after you do your second side, we're going to take the feet a little bit further apart. And you're gonna make that movement a little bit bigger. Inhale to the center, exhale, take your knees over to the side, alternating sides, moving with your breath. And again, next time you finish the second side, we're gonna walk the feet again, two or three inches apart. So now they're maybe almost as wide as your mat. And again, inhale, center, and exhale, loop to the side, inhale back to the center, exhale to your second side. And you're still breathing, you're only moving if you're breathing. One more time on each side. Does your butt stay on the floor? As you are twisting, the outside hip is gonna lift off a little bit, but really your pelvis is staying on the floor, okay? Now next time you come back to the center, we're going to meet in the middle. You're gonna roll over to the side and sit yourself up. And if you have your tennis balls, now would be the time to grab them. And and as I've said before, if you don't have tennis balls, you can use your hands and you can also use a rolled up blanket or a second mat. But we're gonna take the tennis ball so your butt stays on the floor and you bend your knees, you're gonna press the tennis balls in and then take your knees from side to side. Or you're gonna start moving front to back over the tennis balls. Right, so you're doing whatever feels good to start to loosen up the connection of the hamstrings into the pelvis, right? Whenever you feel done with that, some of you will wanna stay longer than others. We're gonna to come to the outside. So again, your butt stays on the floor, but you kinda of lean to the side, press the tennis ball in, and again, you're gonna take your knees from side to side or you're gonna press in one at a time on either side, right? So we're trying to get that sides of your hips. And you can see, like I kind of explore a little bit and move in different ways. You want to 
of course, always move in a way that feels good. Now, eventually, you're going to come take those out and bring the tennis balls to the back body. Okay? And again, your butt's on the floor. You lean forward. You put the tennis balls in and then press back into them, moving your knees side to side, moving your body front to back or side to side in some way that doesn't instigate your lower back. And you're still breathing long, smooth breaths, paying attention to what you feel in your body as you're moving. Now, again, as you start to feel done with that, we're going to take the tennis balls away. And I just want you to give your feet a little attention for a moment, right? So stretching out the toes, you know, separating them, massaging the bottom of the feet, whatever feels good. We're going to work our way from the tips of the toes all the way up to the top of the leg, right? So you're just going to give some attention and we're going to move from the bottom of the body up towards the body, right? So you're making, you're sweeping or massaging your way up the leg from toes to hip. And we want to feel, you know, that little bit of stimulation that happens, right? And again, when you start to feel complete on that side, you move to the second side. And I may move more quickly than you'd like right now, so, or <laughs> too slow, like you do it however it feels good. But again, separating the toes on the second foot, massaging, or just running your fingers along the foot and then making your way up the entire leg. Now, when you're done with that, we're going to make our way onto the hands and knees. And we're not going to stay on the knees for very long, but you might like to have a blanket there just in case. And you all know this one, you know, we're in tabletop, your abdominals, especially the lower ones are engaged, your back is fairly flat, wrists slightly in front of the shoulders, knees slightly behind the hips. Inhale up, exhale down towards child's pose. We're just going to do that for a few breaths. Now the next time that you come up, we're going to make our way onto our elbows. So your hands and elbows are about shoulder distance apart, and you're going to walk your knees back a little bit. And, and your toes are going to be turned under. So what's connected to the floor right now are the hands, the forearms, the knees, and the toes turned under. Okay. Then you're going to inhale, lift up. You might have to walk your feet in a little bit. And exhale, either come down to a modified tabletop or come down into a modified plank. So inhale up, exhale down. And you're moving with your breath, no rush. And the next time that you exhale down, you'll carefully take your knees to the floor and come back into a child's pose and wrap your arms around your legs, forehead towards the floor on a blanket or on the mat or on a block. Just relaxing for a moment. You're noticing how your body feels, how your breath is moving. On one of these inhales, we're going to come up to a kneeling position. And then you're going to step your left foot forward. So now you're going to be in a modified lunge. And your knee on your front leg is right over the ankle. And you're going to turn those back toes under. And your hands 
can be on your thigh. If it doesn't feel good to be up like that, your hands can be on the floor or on a couple of blocks. And we're just gonna stay here for a moment and I want you to notice how you're feeling. And also I want you to pull that front foot towards the center and pull the back knee in. So isometrically you're pulling in towards the center. And we're gonna keep breathing. And after your next exhale, we're gonna step that front foot back. And then you're gonna bring the other foot forward and do the same exact thing. So knee, front knee is over the ankle, back knee is behind your hip with the toes turned under. Isometrically, you're pulling the feet towards one another and either have your hands up on the thigh or down on the ground or on a couple of blocks. And you're breathing, long, smooth breaths. And again, you're noticing, of course, as we move, how you feel. Now, when you're complete with this, and I want you to think about it before you move there, when you're complete, you're gonna have your hands on the floor on your blocks and you're gonna step forward. So you're gonna lift that back knee up and step forward into a forward bend. And the feet are about hip width apart. You're in your forward bend. We're gonna hold on to the elbows and just start to move slowly side to side. You might bend your knees as you're doing this or keep your legs straight and you're still breathing. Now from here, eventually you're gonna let go of your elbows, take your hands onto your legs. The inhale is gonna be halfway up, your vision stays towards the ground and the exhale in towards your legs. So inhale is up, exhale is down, two more times. And then after that next exhale, when you inhale, you're gonna come all the way up. Make sure that you're not too dizzy. And then you're gonna feel your feet on the floor. And if you have your tennis ball, you're gonna grab that. We're gonna roll through the feet for just a moment. Because everybody should roll <laughs> their feet on tennis balls every day. And make sure that you give both tennis balls an even amount of attention. And then when you're complete with that, some of you might like to take a block and place it between your thighs. And some of you might like to do this without a block. And also, depending on where you are, some of you might want to take your butt against the wall. Okay, so what we're gonna do the inhale is gonna be up, the exhale you're gonna sit into you know, a partial chair, but if, it, you, but, um, if you like, you can press your bottom into the wall, right? So inhale is up, exhale is down. If it doesn't feel good to move the hands, you're gonna keep them on your thighs. And you might notice I'm not going really deeply here because what I want you to do is just get that movement between, you know, in the ankles, the knees, and the hips with your breath, no rush. Now, next time you come down, we're gonna hold that pose for a minute. So again, you could have, you could be pressing your buttocks into the wall. We're gonna bring the hands to the heart center and you're gonna press gently on the palms and the fingertips. And then I want you to imagine that you can feel your shoulder blades pulling towards each other on the back body. So you're pressing in with the hands and you're inviting the shoulder blades on the back of the body to come towards one another. So it's kind of like opposing forces, but not really. And you're still breathing. One more breath. 
Then we're gonna let go of the hands. You're gonna bring your hands onto your thighs. Inhale up and then exhale, slide one more time into a forward bend. And then inhale, slide all the way up. And when you make your way up to the top, you can still be holding onto the block or you can get rid of it. We're gonna roll through one shoulder at a time and exaggerate it, right? Inhale up, exhale, really take that shoulder behind you because we're trying to get those shoulder blades to glide onto the back body and then alternate sides. So really thinking about like, how can you get that articulation of the shoulder blade on the back body without of course hurting yourself <laughs> and you're still breathing and we're still maybe hanging on to the block and eventually you'll stop and do both shoulders at the same time. And for this next part, you can choose to keep your feet flat on the ground or you can come up onto your toes. We're gonna to inhale, reach for the sky and exhale, come down. And just moving again with your breath, inhale is up, exhale is down with the arms, possibly with the feet as well. And either way, you're still pulling into the center with your legs, which is one of the reasons I like to have the block in between the thighs. Now, next time that you come down, you're gonna pause for a moment and connect with your breath. And we're going to connect the hands behind the back or you are going to use a sock or strap or something like that behind you, okay? So now you have your hands about shoulder distance apart behind you, maybe a little bit more. You're standing up, you're pressing your feet into the ground, you're pulling into the center with your thighs. So you're kind of squeezing that block a little bit. Inhale is gonna be up. Exhale, you're gonna come into a forward bend. Your knees may bend or you can keep them straight. Inhale, reach your hands towards the sky. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, press down with your feet and come up. Again, exhale into your forward bend. Inhale, reach the hands towards the sky. Exhale, hands come to the hips. Press down with your feet as you inhale and come up. We're gonna do it one more time. Inhale is up. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, reach the hands towards the sky. Exhale, hands come down, press down with your feet. Inhale, come up. And then connect with your breath. Again, make sure you're not dizzy. You're gonna bring the strap in front. So now you have your strap and it's about shoulder distance apart. And I want you to bring that strap up to about shoulder height. And you're gonna just pull on that strap for just a moment. So you're bringing your shoulders back and pulling on the strap. And at the same time, your feet are connected to the floor and you're pulling into the center with your thighs and you're breathing. Lots of things happening. On one of these exhales, we're gonna let go of that. We're gonna take the block out, but you're still gonna use your strap. And now you're towards the, the front or the center of your mat. And you're gonna bring your hands up to about shoulder height and you're gonna gently pull on your strap and bring your weight into your right foot. And you're gonna take your left leg behind you. And you're gonna let your leg be your guide, okay? So inhale as you start to lift up that leg and exhale, possibly you're gonna to start to come forward. Another way to do this would be to have your hands on the wall, All right? And we're just gonna stay on the one side and maybe do that two to four times. And then next time you come up, you're gonna switch sides. And again, start to let your leg guide your body. And I don't want you to come down too far, right? You're just bringing yourself to a place where you can be in control of that movement. And again, two to four times, depending on how quickly you're moving. 
And next time you come up, if you're using the strap, we're gonna put that down. You're gonna bring the hands onto the thighs. Inhale's gonna be up, exhale, slide down. So this is our counter pose, right? We wanna come back to center. So as you exhale down the legs, you're gonna slide down the front. As you inhale, you're gonna come up the back. Slow movement, knees can be bent, because this is our time to you know, quiet down the heart a little bit, breathe and focus. Now from here, let's say next time you come up, I want you to pause for a moment and just breathe, connect with your body and your heart. You might even take your hands back onto your body like we did when we were first laying down at the very beginning of the practice. And I just want you to connect with your breath and your body once more before we move on to the next part. And this next part you can do against a wall if you have one close by. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. And you might want to have a block. So you might have your block in line with your right foot or a little off to the side. And then we're going to be bringing the left leg up and your left arm up so that the hips and the shoulders are open. And like right now, I have my whole body leaning against the wall. You can also do this so that your foot is against the wall. And you can do it off the floor, I mean off the wall as well. So I'm gonna talk you through that now and I'm gonna do it against the wall so that you can see me. So the right foot stays forward, you step back with the left foot into a lunge. Right hand is on the block, left hand is on the hip. You're gonna press with your left toes, lift that leg up, and then you're gonna carefully open, it, open up the hips and the shoulders, and then possibly extend your left arm up. Your left foot is flexed, and then your head could be looking up towards that hand straight ahead or towards the ground, whatever feels best on your head. And then when you're ready, hand comes down, Close the hips and shoulders, bend that front knee, and come down into your lunge. Hand comes off of the block. You're gonna stand up, and then we're gonna step the feet together. Inhale's gonna be up. Exhale, we're gonna come into a forward bend. This is kind of our coming back to the center again. Inhale, come on up. And then you're gonna take your block, and switch to the second side. So again, I have the block just to the outside of my left pinky toe. And I'm gonna step back with my right foot into a lunge. Find your balance and your focus. Now we're gonna bring the left hand onto the block, right hand onto the hip. You're gonna come up onto the right toes, keep breathing, lift that up, that leg up, flex the foot, open the hips and the shoulders, press your back body against the wall if you're using the wall, and then extend that right hand up. And again, you find a comfortable place for your head. And you keep breathing, find your focus. And if this pose doesn't work for you, find some aspect, some modification that does. Now again, very carefully, right hand comes to the hip, close the hips and the shoulders, you look towards the floor, bend the front knee, the foot comes down, hand comes off the block, lift yourself up, step those feet together, both hands are on the thighs, inhale up, exhale into your forward bend, and then inhale, come up. And once you come up, I want you to just roll through the shoulders, checking in, heart rate, body temperature, breath. And then we're gonna take the feet 
a little bit wider, bring your arms down to your side and a gentle swing from side to side. You might bend your knees, not moving too quickly, but you're noticing how does your body feel right now, right? Now from here, we're going to make our way down towards the ground and what I want you to have, a couple of different things. So you could have a rolled blanket, you could have like a foam roller and um, that might be too firm for some of you. If you have a roller, you might have a blanket to put over top. And then you might have a, um, a block and a strap close by as well. So we're gonna come down to the ground and you're gonna place your roll of whatever you have. Your butt's gonna stay on the ground. We've done this lots of times, right? You're gonna bring that roller and, and again, if it's a foam roller, it's gonna be a little bit firm, so you might need a little space or a little blanket towards the lower back. And you're gonna bring your body down onto the roller, onto the rolled blanket or the roller. And then while you're here, knees are bent, feet are flat on the floor, you're gonna release your shoulders. And just take a moment again to connect with your breath, feeling your back body on the ground. Now let's say you get yourself set up here and you have the roller and it's not comfortable. Get rid of it and use a rolled blanket, right? Because you want yourself to be comfortable here. You're gonna let go of the shoulders and just connect with your breath, long, smooth breaths. Now we're actually gonna relax the upper body to the best of our ability. And then we're going to take our feet a little bit wider, well, definitely wider than your hips, maybe as wide as your mat. And then one at a time, you're gonna bring your knee in towards the center. So you're gonna bring one knee down, the other knee stays pointing up towards the ceiling. Inhale up, exhale, bring the other knee in. And you're just gonna move with your breath, one knee at a time trying to remain relaxed through the upper body, right? So you're moving through the legs, but you're relaxed through your head, neck, and shoulders and arms. And move really slowly so that you can feel what's happening in the body as you move. Now, again, Eventually, we're gonna to come to a place where we stop, but you wanna make sure that you do both sides an even amount of time. And then bring your feet in to about hip width apart. Knees are still bent. Now we're gonna work a little bit with the upper body. And so here, you're gonna bring your arms out like cacti, all right, and so, some of you, your hands may not come to the floor and that's totally okay. You're just looking for a comfortable place where your arms are like cacti, right? And seeing if you can relax. And I'm just sitting up so that you can see the position of my arms if you happen to be looking up. Now, inhale is gonna be arms away from one another. Exhale, you're gonna bring elbows, forearms, hands towards one another. Inhale, open the arms. Exhale, elbows, forearms, hands come towards one another. Moving with your breath in a way that is comfortable for you. So again, your elbows may not come together, no big deal. You're just moving in a way that you can, that feels good. Now next time the elbows and hands and forearms come towards one another, we're gonna hold that position. I want you to feel your feet on the ground, so don't disconnect from the lower part of the body. You're relaxed as much as you can be through your head and your torso. Your butt is relaxed on the floor, and now the movement is gonna be reach your fingers overhead, right? And it might be a teeny tiny movement. So the inhale will be lifting your Fingertips over the head, exhale, elbows towards the chest. And again, only moving in a way that feels good. Doesn't feel good, stop doing it. And 
And the next time that you exhale and elbows come towards the chest, you're gonna relax your arms for just a moment. And now we're going to explore a movement that for some of you might be um, new or different. So you're gonna bring your right arm up, you're gonna bend the elbow and reach your hand towards the floor. For those of you who did gymnastics when you were little, it would be how you're, like if you're going into a back bend, but we're only gonna do one hand at a time. And then I want you to press that hand into the floor. Another option, if you happen to have your back body, your head towards the wall, would be to press your hand into the wall, okay? So you're reaching that one arm overhead, pressing into the wall or into the floor, and noticing all those wonderful muscles in your arms, in your upper back body, and you're still breathing. Then we're gonna relax that arm for a moment and notice how you feel left to right. And then whenever you're ready, you're gonna reach the left arm up, bend the elbow, hand towards the war wall <laughs> or the floor. I kind of put those two words together and you're gonna press down. And again, you're still breathing, trying to stay relaxed through the rest of your body and yet still aware of what's happening in the rest of your body as you're pressing this left hand into the floor or the wall. And you're still breathing. Long, smooth breaths. And so while it might seem like it's an inactive pose, it's actually pretty active, especially in that one arm, but in the rest of your body as well. Now again, eventually we're gonna to come to a place where we stop. You're gonna undo that left arm, bring it down to the side. And one more time, you're gonna reconnect with your body and your feet on the floor. We're gonna interlace the fingers or you're gonna press your palms towards one another. And now the inhale is gonna be both arms coming up overhead. Again, if you're near the wall, you could press your hands into the wall and exhale arms back to the body. So inhale, arms up overhead, exhale, hands back down, or you can just press both hands into the wall and keep breathing and pressing and keep breathing and pressing. And then I would say after your next exhale, we're gonna bring the arms down. Now this one, it's kind of an interesting movement that you're gonna to have to play with a little bit. I want you to imagine that you can connect or kind of hook your left shoulder blade onto that roll on the back body and slide your body to the right, right? So you're trying to hook your left shoulder blade on your roll and reach your body to the right. We're trying to get to help that shoulder blade move a little bit on the back body. So it truly is an exploration of trying to get some movement on the back of the body. And as I do this, it actually feels a little bit like a massage. And you might be saying, this doesn't feel like a massage. <laughs> now, eventually, again, we're gonna to come to a place where we stop, you're gonna pause, notice how your body feels, and then try to hook the right shoulder blade and move your body off to the left. And again, a little bit of exploration. You might need to move yourself around to get that shoulder blade to kind of hook onto your roll. And you're still breathing and moving in a way that feels good. And if you can't get at all what I'm talking about, just move in some way that feels good or relax. My dog wants to join in, so hi, Mitchie. Now, eventually, we're gonna to come to a place where we stop, and you're gonna pause for a moment and notice how your body's feeling. And then when you're ready, Luckily, this is during Shavasana, right? I'm gonna have to go talk to him for a moment. Now, we're gonna bring the knees over to the right-hand side, both knees if possible, 
and bring your head to the left. Now, if this doesn't work with the roll under your body, you're gonna take the roll out from under your body and just have your body flat on the floor. And we're gonna have the knees pointing in one direction and if appropriate for your neck, the head pointing in the opposite direction. And we're gonna hold the position, but keep breathing. And remember, like everything that we do, we want to feel good. I'm going to return momentarily. Okay, so don't worry, he's still alive. I just, oh, yep, see? Now we're gonna come back to the center and you're gonna do the second side. So knees over to the left and head to the right again, if appropriate for you. So it might be that you turn the head or the knees and not both. It might be that you still have the roll under your back body or not. And just see if you can relax with your breath. We're going to make our way eventually back to the center and then very carefully move to the side and take your roll out from underneath you. And then we are going to make our way onto our bellies. And so just for a few moments, I want you to relax your forehead onto your hands or onto the floor, whatever is comfortable. Your legs are stretched out and, you know, maybe a little bit wider than your hips or as wide as your hips. And you're just going to relax for a moment. And I know some of us are not as comfortable on our bellies. And so do whatever you need to do to help yourself to be comfortable here. Now from your belly, you're going to bend both knees and your feet are flexed and we're going to just carefully move the feet side to side only in a way that feels good and so it might just be a smaller movement, it might be a bigger movement. Now we're going to take the left foot down and you're gonna reach back with your right hand and bring that heel towards your buttock. And this one we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're gonna take the left arm and stretch that out. So right now you have your right arm on your right ankle and the left arm and leg are extended. Now on an inhale, you might start to walk those fingers back and press your ankle into your hand. Okay, so this is kind of like a one-legged bow. Now for some of you, and you're gonna explore and see if it's you, you're gonna lift that arm and leg off the ground at the same time that you're pressing the right ankle into the right hand. And you're gonna keep breathing. Then very carefully on an exhale, take that arm and leg down. Gently release your right ankle. And then you're gonna bend the right arm, put your head down, take a breath. And then whenever you're ready, bend the left knee and reach for that ankle. And at first we're taking the heel towards our buttock, seeing if we can somewhat relax here. And then we're gonna stretch out the right arm and the right leg. And on the inhale, you're gonna hold on to that left ankle, press the ankle into the hand as you start to walk the body up with the right fingertips. And then again, some of you will take that right arm and leg off of the ground. But you're only doing what feels good, right? I know I keep saying that, but that's how it is. And again, you're holding and you're breathing. So you're holding the pose, but your breath keeps moving. Eventually, we're going to gently release the arm and leg to the ground. Let go of your left ankle. 
and then fold both of your arms and relax your head, bend your knees, and carefully move your feet side to side. We're gonna do one more thing here. And of course, if you're not liking this, you're making, you're doing whatever feels good in your body. So eventually we're gonna stop with the feet flexed and about hip distance apart. We're gonna make our way up onto our elbows. So it's kind of like a sphinx pose with the front of the body. And what I want you to do, you're pulling your arms, your elbows towards the body, opening up the chest. You're flexing your feet and you're bringing those heels towards your butt. Not that they're gonna come down there, right? Keep breathing. And then we're going to gently release the feet to the ground and you're gonna either press back into a child's pose or you're gonna roll onto your back and take your knees in towards your chest, okay? So either making your way into child's pose or you're coming onto your back and bringing your knees in towards your chest. And this is a great time to check in, like how is my body doing right now? And depending on how you are, child's pose or on your back, you might be moving or you might be stationary, but you're still breathing and checking in. And eventually, let's all make our way onto our backs. And you can, a couple of different ways you can do this next piece. You could use your rolled blanket under your pelvis. You can use a block. Um, or if you practice full shoulder stand, you can start to get yourself ready to move into a full shoulder stand. And when we're here, so I'm going to use the block because that's what I have right close to my hands. You want to make sure that the block is under your pelvis, not on your lumbar spine at all. And then one at a time, you'll lift your knees up and reach your feet up towards the sky. And if you're moving into full shoulder stand, go ahead and I'm assuming that's part of your practice and you know how to get yourself there. And we're gonna stay here for a few breaths. And you might like to hold your legs stationary. You might like to move them into a wide angle or little splits. Just kind of exploring what feels good today. For me today, just holding them straight up towards the sky feels best. So that's what I'm gonna do. And if you're on the block or a blanket, I want you to think about taking your shoulders towards the ground and opening up your chest a little bit. And just long, smooth breaths. Now, for those of you who might want to explore a little bit, you might let's say you're used to doing full shoulder stand or you want to try this, you would take the block out from under you, extend the arms and the legs, inhale with the body long, exhale, bring your legs up overhead into plow pose, long smooth breaths. When you're here, don't turn your head, keep breathing. We're looking to have the hips over the shoulders. And it's a static pose, so we're not moving in and out of it. And when you're ready to come out, you'll bend the knees, gently roll down. And then one more time, stretch out the arms and legs like you're standing on your feet with your arms extended overhead. And if you're still up on your block, you're going to carefully make your way down. And this is when you are going to check in with your body and ask yourself this, if there's anything else that you, your body needs that you would like to do before you make your way into Shavasana. And if you're ready for Shavasana, a couple of different things that you can do. Um, we've talked about legs up the wall before where you 
Have your body flat on the floor and your legs extended up the wall. You could also be on your back with that roll under the back body like we did before, or you could have a little roll under your knees. So I want you to find a comfortable position where you can let go, let go of the body, let go of the mind. And as you start to get yourself set up, you want to check in and see, is there, is there anything else that would make this position just a little bit more comfortable? Right? If something's a little off, it's, it's going to be hard to let go completely. So looking for that comfortable place. And then as you get yourself set up, inviting any tension. In fact, anything in your mind or body that doesn't serve you, inviting it to dissipate out into the earth. So long, smooth breaths. Lovely and 
So you may want to start to move and come to a seated position. Or you may want to stay in your Shavasana a little bit longer. And if you are coming up to a seated position, I'm going to invite you as you're doing your breathing practice to notice the pauses. So inhale, pause, exhale, pause. Doesn't matter how long the breaths are, I just want you to notice that pause and accentuate it just a little bit. So inhale, pause, two, three, exhale, pause, two, three, or whatever feels good, right? We're looking for that pause in between inhale and exhale and exhale and inhale. And all of us have been given a pause in some way, shape, or form for the last month, almost two now. And what is it like to be in the pause? And so as you make your way into the day after we're done today, just noticing, like pausing in between different activities or contacts or whatever it is that we're doing, giving yourself a moment to recognize that space in between the activities that we do. And even if we're not leaving our house at all, we still change activities. You know, when I'm done teaching, I'm going to make some breakfast, you know. And, and so, like, how do we transition? What do we do in those in-between spaces? And so allowing your awareness to come back to your breath and your body. Noticing how you feel. And, you know, setting the intention, the tone for the rest of your day. And if you'd like to join me in an home to close class, a nice big inhale. Oh. Thank you so much for joining me in this virtual world, which has really become quite interesting.